Hello, Cherries fans. Hope you've all got a smile on your face this Easter weekend because two games, two wins. Happy days. It wasn't liquid football. Definitely not. But listen, we're at a stage of the season where it's all about winning. And uh, boys have shown some fight and we've got two good wins. Two really difficult games. And I remember that season when we went up and that Easter weekend felt pivotal and it might do again. So, yeah, I hope you all smile. I hope you all had a good Easter weekend. And because the game was so close together, I thought we'd just do a bit of a player rating show, just kind of averaging out the performances from all the players over the Easter weekend. Can't do it alone. So I've got a free-for-all, an AFC Bournemouth fan favourite. Keithy Thomas with me. Keith, how are you, mate? Good Tom. weekend. Yeah, yeah. With the results, the weather's not too bad. So a bit cold today. But uh, it, in sunny, sunny Milford, it's all going well. And hopefully with Boris's announcement earlier, we'll be out of this lockdown sooner rather than later. Yeah, no, definitely. You know, we've got that to that to look forward to. Things get a little bit back to normal. And also on the pitch, we're starting to... We start, we, we spoke about it briefly off air, didn't we, Keith? And yeah. We, yeah, the football's not brilliant, but it's nice to see. We saw it briefly in that Watford game not too long ago. But it's nice to see the team look a bit more together at the moment. They look like they've got they've got a plan, they're organised, and they're fighting for each other. And that's as fans, that's all we ask for, isn't it? Absolutely. You want you want commitment on the pitch. And I think what Woody's done is he's got the team working for each other and fighting for each other, which we were sorely lacking in the um, in the deep mid winter. So uh, you've got to give him hats off. He's come in a chaotic situation and, and he's got a, a cohesiveness about it. It's not pretty football. It's not, you know, when it, it does what it says on the tin. And uh, at the moment, as Bruce Forsyth once told me, points make prizes, mate. Does indeed, I love that, Keith. Right, if we're going to get into, get into the players, like I say, we'll just average it over the two games kind of thing. Yeah. Um, so obviously got to start with Asmir. And to be fair, before, right at the end of the game, I was thinking he hasn't had an awful lot to do in the two games. It would be would be a shame that he didn't keep a clean sheet against Borough. But I thought he's just done his job well, nothing too pretty. This would be a quick and easy one. And then he goes and makes a magical penalty save. And listen, there was six minutes at a time. You'd never yeah. know what would have happened if that had went in. And it was a bloody good save as well, wasn't it, with his legs? But um, reliable was always one of absolutely spot on, wasn't he? Uh, he what he does, uh, what I like about it, he's always talking to his back four as well. He's always talking to Cookie. He's always talking to CCV, and that experience all came to the fore in those last six minutes. And yeah, great save. Um, but he, he made a number of saves in the, certainly in the um, Blackburn game. Mm. Uh, I thought it, I thought he really commands his box well. He's uh, when he makes a decision, he sticks to that decision. Um, the, you know, the previous game, he's not at fault for it. it you know, it, it nutmegs. Uh, I think it was Cook or, or just Mrs. Cook, and he, he dives, but uh, couldn't really keep it out. But he's done very little wrong all season, and uh, he's been instrumental. And I hope he stays with us for another season because, yeah. we, irrespective of what he does, he's he's been a, a real legend. He's come to the fore now. He has felt like a new signing, hasn't he? And I remember yeah. briefly hearing things from from Jason, who obviously decided to kind of bring him back in, if you like, when we lost Ramsdale. And I think a lot of it, as much as he's a great goalkeeper. We lost a few kind of experienced heads, you know, Simon Francis, Charlie Daniels, Andrew Sermon. And I think he looked at Begovic and thought he's also got that leadership, lead them leadership qualities we need. And I think we're seeing that, like you mentioned, he organises the back line well. And you've got to have that experience through the spine. We got Cookie back there. But I think if you're a defender, I bet Cookie would say when you when you rely on the person behind you, that's massive platform. So I think Begovic is someone's going to have to do really well to stop him getting player of the season because he's been as you say, instrumental. I probably would have said a solid seven over the weekends because of the penalty save. Should we up it to it's an eight? up to an eight. Yeah, Not I was going to exactly, exactly the same, mate. Uh, an eight, a solid yeah. eight. Um, really good. Really, yeah. really good. Yeah, no, can't disagree with that, mate. And to be fair, I think someone that get, has had a bit of criticism this season, Adam Smith, because I, I always said that I, I felt from earlier in the season because he was getting criticised, but he was being told to do a job on the left. Um, and things like that. But I actually think recently Woodgate's kind of put his hat on him, hasn't he, as well, and said, you're probably my leading right back. Um, and I felt the Middlesbrough game, We saw, I saw it earlier that um, he scored against Watford, Balassi, and he'd done nothing. I thought, And they actually had to move him to the other wing because Smithy done really well on Balassi. And he was part of the first goal today. 
I'm liking what I see. I think we're starting to see the old Smithy back recently. Yeah, he's chuntering away. He's uh, he is a character on the pitch as well. And again, another leader. Uh, and he's looking to wanting to get forward um, and get those runs that he used to do uh, when he was in the Prem. And, uh, you know, the, he wasn't played as much in the uh, promotion wise. But he's a character. And again, we needed the leadership. And he's just steadies the ship. He's defensively far uh, a little bit more solid than Stacey. Um, but I, 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 I was certainly impressed with him today in that first half. The little flick on, but it's his energy. He's running that creates that lovely ball across to Bill. Um, and then things happen after that. So uh, you can't fault him. I think he's been solid in both at the Borough game and at the Blackburn game. Can't, yeah. can't. I think has a point of foot, foot wrong. No, I think I think people look at it sometimes he gets beat in the air, sometimes at the back post because of his height and things like that. But I spoke to I spoke to my dad after the Middlesbrough game actually, and I thought he made a good point and said that sometimes when you got a player like Smith, who's energy like you mentioned, and his work rate is tenacity, and that kind of bleeds off to the other players. You see someone giving that, and that almost bounces off, doesn't it? And I. I think Smithy just, like you say, he's just gritty and he's almost a bit nasty. I wouldn't like to play against him as a winger because he's just niggly and, um, yeah. and yeah, energy to burn. And I quite like it as well. We've done it in both games where you've got that option of bringing Stacey on in front of him if you're leading. Because mm. St- Stacey's been pretty consistent as well, but um, really good options to have. But yeah, I think I think Smithy's been really good. Um, I'll let you have the have the call on a rating overall. Difficult one. I think it's a seven. Yeah. Um, I, I think. Um, he could do with working on his delivery a little bit more, although he, he obviously got that ball to Billing. Um, I like him to see if he could make a deeper cross in and, and, and or switch up the play, move it out to the other flank quickly. But what you get with Smithy, he, he, he's no Frano. He's a different type of character, but he's still a leader. And I think he's really coming into his own and he's going to be key. Yeah. In our in our uh, push for um, playoff places, I agree, Keith. And I'm gonna I'm gonna mix that. I'm not gonna go on all positions. I'm gonna I think it might be a little bit alphabetical. I'm just gonna click what I've got because we've got over the two worries, games. Mate. So we got Arnel Dan Juma, and I mean, he's he's such a weird player, really, Arnie. Because I look at him sometimes, and I think, you know what? Yeah, there's a few in other teams, but I think technically, ability wise, there's not many better in the league. I mean, he knows that. <laughs> He'll tell us that. I quite. We all joke about it, but I quite like his arrogance. I think yep. sometimes in a forward player, the best forwards and players like that are a bit selfish or a bit arrogant. They believe in themselves. Ibrahimovic, for example, is a great a great example. They've yep. got to believe in themselves, and I like that about him. I felt today what I liked about him was his work rate. I thought I heard a few times Arnie back there defending. I thought, was he blooming it? Yeah. But yep. um. To be fair to him, he's got again today one nil, looking a bit nervy. He's got the magic he, that that little bit he done it earlier in the season pulled us out of of you know really difficult situations. And he comes in hot and cold. Sometimes he's frustrating. Sometimes you think lay it off. But I tell you what, we, he is going to be crucial because he's got that magic in it, and he? Absolutely, you don't want to take that that maverick out of him. That's his game. Uh, he he. Some people say he's selfish. I, d- I think he works for the team, but he is so creative. I mean, he, he I, he's running, he's, uh, he, he's directness at times. Yes, he slows up the play because, that, because that's obviously something that's been coached into him as a, as a Dutch kid. You know, you, you've got to bring, bring up the play and what have you. Um, but he, just that he's finishing is exquisite you, and you don't want to take that out of him so you've got to accept is he a luxury player i don't know but you want you want that exuberance he's the flair player that w- in an otherwise a team that isn't lacking in a lot of flair they're they technically good but he's just has that something else so uh, i thought he was and his defensive work today certainly in the second half he was dropping in uh, in the full back and letting Kelly go on, which was really interesting. Um, he's young, but you wait until he's 26, 27, he's going to be playing for the top teams either in the UK or in Europe. Yeah, I, I uh, think, I like, 
like you say, if he keeps, he's always had fitness problems, and I think if he if he keeps himself fit, he's he's got the the raw ability there is unbelievable, and you forget how young he is as well. And I also think to give him a bit of credit, I genuinely believe that Woodgate. We we mentioned off air, didn't we, about the fullbacks probably don't bomb on quite as much. Um, Whereas we, we played a five at the back with Tindall a few times and allowed them, the wing-backs, to go. And I wonder if sometimes Woodgate says, don't really get involved in the defensive play. Kelly or Rico or whoever's there, they're going to kind of stay. But we need you to be brave and just stay up there because you can hurt teams. And it's yeah. almost worth the risk because they might get in a few times. But are they going to provide as much magic as Arnie potentially can for us? Um, Absolutely. Absolutely, Tom. And the, the thing is, I think he's unshackled from that. And I, with a player like him, and I suppose there's a the, people are making comparisons to Jordan. I um, that with those type types of players, if you shackle them in, they get frustrated. They get frustrated with their teammates. They 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 look like lost souls. If you allow him to just drift all over the place, and uh, uh, Simon Kay was saying, and I, I totally agree with him, the rotation with Stan in the Borough game, that's excellent. And you want him to move about. You want him to float around and just work off Dom. And I think Woodgate's given him a little bit of licence to say, look, Kelly will be the more disciplined one. Um, and Lerma will come across or Bill will come across if we need to. Uh, or, and Pearson. So just go and play your game and, yeah. and, and get those goals for us. Yeah, I agree. I, I, I think it a few times. A few times a season, I've watched um, Tottenham, for example. We've got Mourinho, who we all know, you know, what he's like. And there's a few times where I think, when you've got a player like a Son or a Bell, don't stop telling them to do all this. You know, making them too rigid and say you've got to play. just let them off the leash. And I think Arnie's a, a prime example of that. Yeah. And um, yeah, and I think that's when you're going to get the best out of him. Sometimes you're going to think, oh, why aren't you chasing back? But I think it's worth the gamble. Um, I think probably just because of that goal at the end, he, de he deserves a. Quite a decent rating, Keith. What do you reckon? I think an eight is a is a decent rating for him. And uh, as I say, it is all round game today. I think that's the best all round performance I've seen him uh, this season. So yeah, uh, certainly on today's results, Burrow is a little bit more quieter, but but overall, he, he yeah. he's making progress. Yeah, no, I agree with that. And manly in the line, I really thought Kirk. Stat was going to go out the window. I thought he's going to get a goal today. He's going to score back to back, but oh, I feel for him. But I tell you what, even as far back as the Blim and Southampton game, I, I watch him. And even when what I'm trying to say to that is when we don't play well, I always think he still gives everything. He yeah. still leads the line so well. And normally, if it doesn't quite happen for him, it's not really down to him a lot of the time. And we're just talking about Arnie there. And the reason Arnie's been given a licence and Billy New will come on to is because we need to get people closer to him because. Dom does so much. He's such an saying about Arnie, but Dom's such an unselfish striker, isn't he? Um, yeah. But I, I do just, I do love him, and I really sometimes I just want something to hit him and bounce off him and go in, just, just so it looks better as a striker with them that goals return. But I, th I just think he's been, he's been top one of our best players in the last couple of games, don't you? I, I, I for me, the courage that lad's shown since, uh, since the beginning of the season, everyone wrote him up. Uh, I, I, I hasten to say I, I was one of the ones that stuck up for him. Uh, his unselfishness reminds me of another Bournemouth legend, the big man. The, the way he brings in play, the way he does all that dirty work, giving the centre-backs a hard time. He, he will move around the, uh, at, at the top, but he has a lonely job to do. And particularly if you're, you know, for me, Billing's not a pure 10. He's, he's not a Burkamp or a Totti. He, he comes in deep and he, he has a, 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 a more overview in the in the midfield. But Dom is, it's all for the team. And that, and he sacrifices himself. And for me, he's going to be one of my players of the season because from being completely written off and from the first game onwards, he has worked his socks off and shown it. He, the red and black mean something to him. And in a, in, a, in a team full of mavericks, you need that guy. He doesn't even a, a, a pure nine to work off, but but you cannot fault his work rate. He's got good, quick feet. He's strong. He's intelligent. He makes runs. He does everything you want. And that's why Denjuma, early in the season, and I am sure others, just love working off him. And, uh, yeah, 
maybe another big man in the in the making there. That'd be yeah, no, brilliant. I totally agree with you, and I think, like we said earlier, I think sometimes when it's not working, you just want that fight. And I've never ever come out of a game when I've been really annoyed with you know the lack of work rest. I've never said it about Dom. Dom, Dom. I all, every time I say it, you go well. Apart from you know Cookie and Slanky, you know because he always puts a shift in and. Mm. I think it probably for him, that, that's where his unselfishness comes into it because I think he'd be the first to admit probably the performances he's enjoyed the most have been when Surridge has been next to him or Josh King earlier in the season because he if if he's got someone with him and he could play just off them and just in and around them and do the do the hard work, he's unbelievable. At the moment, he's aware with the players we've got available, et cetera, et cetera, he's having to lead that line on his own and I just mm. think he does it. He might not always get the headlines, but he's not about that. He's about the team, and he yeah. gets he get he might not be the one that's his name's not written as the goal, but nearly every goal he's involved in in some way. Whether it's a run, whether it's a layoff, he got the assist for the first goal today. He's always involved, and I, I totally agree with you. I think it's easy to I think Begovic obviously deserves a shout and and Cookie and a few others, but I, for me, I think Dom Solanke is just just as much as worthy of getting player of the season because he's been so consistent for us. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, he's a striker, so there'll always be them few that judge him on goals, which I do appreciate. But I think he's been great in the two games again. Do you reckon the same rating as, as the last man? What do you think? He was my man of the match for the Borough game because of his work rate. Um, but he was a little bit quieter today. He did his work quietly. He was causing their centre-backs problems. And what I liked about it, he was coming deep to help out his midfield. He isn't just sticking up there on his own. He comes in deep. He's going wide. He's helping out. So I think an eight overall, uh, but it's, um, it's a real credit to that lad because he could have just... I want out. Spoke to his agent. I want out. They just give me abuse. They don't. And uh, no, he's stuck in it. And I think he's going to be a fan favourite going forward. And I hope we can build around him and keep him. And Definitely. because that he's a he's a he's a real credit to himself. Someone else I love, mate. Big Jeff got the oh. remember he got a key goal against Middlesbrough, didn't he? I mean, I know it wasn't it wasn't beautiful, but um, it was a key goal at a key time just when we got pegged back and. He's another one. I just think he's so reliable. And and what you see, it doesn't surprise me. But since Woodgate's come in, he's, he is just playing it. He's like, I'm not resting Lerma. You know, regardless of the fact we've had a few options in that middle area, even when Lewis was fit, he's just played Lerma for it all. Um, I've just never seen a man win so many headers, just everything. And he's just, he's been even more probably since Woodgate come in, that shield as well. And um, energy, he just gives you everything. And like I say, he even got a goal, goal against Borough as well. But yeah. I, I I just love Jefferson Lerma and I just we we I think he's one of the ones that we probably need to go up to keep him um, personally, but we'll have to wait and see on that. Mm. But I love Jeff and I just think he's standard, being good for the last two as well, don't you? Absolutely, he is so destructive in that midfield. He his work rate, he's he's got a good pass on him. He's a technically very good player. It's not all about you know, bullying centre mids and bullying um, a defensive mids. He's got an, an absolute all-round game and uh, he's the midfield general. You, you, you know when he's on the pitch, he has very few poor games and when he's poor, everyone else is poor. But um, he's just so solid. Uh, he's energy, he's box to boxing, he's... he's He's fabulous, isn't he? He's you know, really you know is. when someone's so kind of consistent and reliable, mm. you almost sometimes people think, oh, he hasn't really done much today because you almost get used to it. And I thought that was really evident when we played Southampton and he was suspended. Yeah. I said, that's when you'll notice how good Lerma is when he's not there. Because when he wasn't there, we just didn't look right. And and you forget how good he is until he's removed. And then you think, oh, God, yeah, we do need him, actually. Do you know what I mean? Because he goes yeah. about his job so, so comfortably at ease and he doesn't stand out as such. You don't realise how vital he is until he's removed. And I thought, I thought that was evident against Southampton. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, and he adds a dynamism. There is a drive about him. He gets about his work. He, it's not flash, but he gets about his work. He goes about it. Um, he is an absolute monster against the other centre mids and just bullies them. In the, in the right way. He's, he, I've never thought he was a dirty player, uh, but he's tough 
uh, it's an almost old school, mm. um, uh, you know, aura about him that he is not there to muck about. He's there to to get the business done, and uh, I I think he sets really high expectations not only for himself but for his teammates, and that's and again another leader coming on. Um, yeah. Uh, I, I yeah, he's cracking. Love yeah, him. No. I oh, totally agree, mate. Absolutely loving the bits. And even today, he actually kicked the ball out when one of their players went down injured. I thought, blim it, he's actually, they said yeah. Jeff's a bit of sportsmanship there. I thought, oh, blim it, heck. Didn't expect that from him. But uh, Jimmy Case wouldn't be doing that, would he? <laughs> I, yeah, I, you know, I just really rate the guy. And I think, like you yeah. say, his English might not be the best and all stuff like that, but he leads by example on the pitch, yeah. doesn't he? So, similar one. Are we going, are we going for an eight again or? I'm always tempted for a nine because I thought he was absolutely brilliant in that. You're cool, uh, Keith. Let's do him a nine. Let's do him a nine. I've got. I, I've got. I think he is he, in both games absolutely solid. Yeah, brilliant. No, I can't disagree. And another player in both games, solid leader. All them things we just spoke about with Jefferson Lerner, Steve Cook. I mean, epitomised it with that goal line clearance at the end today. Um, but just. He's just the lead. I, even before the game, when I see him getting ready and you see him giving a little team talk for him, and I just think I'm so relieved we've got we've lost a lot of key players from the dressing room, as we mentioned. And I'm so glad that Cookie's still there. Yes, he might make the odd error or whatever. I don't care. I can pull that to the side because I know what Steve Cook brings us. And um, mm. I actually saw today um, they mentioned that he had a bit of treatment in the warm up as well. So I hope there's nothing to that. But yeah. you wouldn't know it, would you? Because he just. He's a brick wall at the back and he's formed a nice partnership with Carter Vickers, who we'll come on to, but ever reliable leader, Steve Cook. Captain Cook, isn't he? He is absolute mustard. Uh, what a great servant for this club. Um, when the when the chips were down, he was one of the ones coming out and saying it as he saw it. And he leads on the pitch. He He's not a shouty guy. He's not, again, not a flash guy. But you can see that every other player on that, when he speaks, they listen. And he leads, by example, uh, a top professional. He's only 29. I think he's just coming up to 30. So he's got a few years left in him. And the way he was covering today, you know, uh, he, he kept uh, Armstrong quiet all day. Uh, and, 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 and Borough, everyone... You know, everyone was in the pocket when he was about. And and remember, he's playing on the left side and he's a right-footed player, but he's so natural. And I think that's why he gets occasionally his pass goes wrong because he's playing that unnatural. It's not his natural side. But, gosh, think of the partnerships he's had, you know, Tommy and Ake, and he's brought them on. And he's going to do the same for the other fellow that we're going to talk about in, yeah. uh, in a short while. Yeah, Brilliant. No, I mean, I don't, I don't, don't say I don't watch every single team in the championship. But if someone said to me, "You can have any centre half in the championship, but you have to give them Steve Cook," I'd just say no. I, I just wouldn't even speak about it anymore. Whether he is the best centre back in the championship, what I'm saying is, what he gives us, I wouldn't replace that for another centre half in this league. No. Um, no. And like you say, no. that then leadership qualities as well. But um, I think. I think he's good enough to be in a, in a lower mid-table premiership squad. I think because he offers so much experience and discipline and he sets the right examples in his diet uh, and, and the way he talks to fans. He's engaged with the club and all that. He's an absolute legend. Yeah, legend. legend. Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're going to go high again. Are we going, how are we going? I'm going to say because he made that little slip up with the goal against Borough, I'm going to contain eight. Yeah, no, that's fair. I, th I forgot it was kind of his slip up, like you say. So that's that's fair. But yeah, I think everyone loves Cookie, and he'll certainly be in the running for yeah. for Player of the Season. I think we might as well go to his partner for the two games, which Cameron Carter Vickers and we spoke briefly off air and said about how you know I feel for, I feel for Jason Tindall because he's brought this guy in, and we thought, why have you brought mm. him? He's never fit. I don't know what Jason saw in this lad. And then he's just come fit as he's left, as as it were. But I tell you, what a player he is! I mean, he is a proper centre half. He's almost like a Rolls Royce at times, you know. He just mm. and there was a few times I think in that Borough game where he had a few little. Uh, I think Begovic gave him a few passes that looked a bit dodgy, but he just dealt mm. with it. He just deals with everything. And yeah. I think what's key now is you know feel for people like Meps and, and stuff like that. But we've got a partnership at centre half now, and that's key. 
And like you said, Cookie's had a few different partners. Now he's got one. He's got a partnership growing there. And he's been mustered, hasn't he? Shays Tommy. Yeah. Shays Tommy Tommy's the rock. He's the absolute, his reading of the game as well is exceptionally, he, sees, he sniffs out danger and he'll snuff it out. Um, he's got pace, um, which Tommy didn't have, but he's, it's, it's just his reading of it and his strength. And, uh, you know, he very rarely puts a foot wrong. And um, funnily enough, he worked with Graham James at Luton. So maybe Graham, Graham Jones was uh, suggested that he might be someone that we might want to look at. Yeah. I gather Tottenham are talking about like uh, extending his contract, but I I would love to get him in. I yeah. think he he's he's everything good goes through him, and he's a ball player. So he doesn't, he, you know, he's he's no mug on the ball either. He he does bring it out. So yeah, Rolls yeah, Royce. I, I think you Brilliant. made it made a good point as well. We've got two set of offs there who the main, their main quality, in my opinion, is reading the game is football intelligence. You know, they're, they're not the, the quickest set of offs in the world. Neither of them. They've got, you know, they're not slow, but neither of them are, are lightning quick, but they read it so well. And um, having two of them there like that is just, and like you say, I've, I've you know, completely forgot that one of the top goal scorers in the league was playing against us today and yeah. didn't get a sniff. Um, so yeah, massive, massive credit for him. And uh, what are you going for? It's got to be a nine. It's yeah. got to be a nine in both games. He has been absolutely uh, rock solid. And you know that things are good when you've got him in the back. Uh, yeah. but, uh, a real credit to himself. He doesn't look like a lone player. He looks no. like a player that wants to wants to play football all the time. And, and I, ho I hope for the US and uh, whatever he does in the mm -hmm. future, if he wants to stay with us or go on, I hope he reaches the top because he's absolutely immense immense player that Spurs have there totally agree mate totally agree I think now we're gonna have to go in some of the players that didn't play in both so we'll kind of try and yeah. do it so we'll go for the left back that played against Borough was Diego Rico um he come on late today but we'll go off the Borough game and obviously I think it looked like because Woodgate's kind of shown that he's probably gonna favor Kelly but mm. But obviously, I think Kelly had played on the Wednesday night for 90 minutes for England on the 21s, and we obviously played on the Friday. So I, it kind of made sense that Diego come in. Diego isn't having the best of seasons. Um, we've obviously said about about Arnie and the fact that you know it's been difficult for the left backs. Um, I do feel for Diego because he comes across quite likable. I always feel like he's someone that that cares. He puts in a tackle, doesn't he? And he and he almost puts a fist in the air and and seems to to care and fight. It just yeah. isn't quite happening for him at the moment. Um, I didn't think he was horrendous against Middlesbrough, to be fair. Um, but it's just not quite happening for Rico. What do you think? No, it's, it's a really difficult season for him. I think he's found it tough, maybe, maybe with Pewey not there or, or, or some of the other lads that he, he obviously, when he came over to the UK... Um, have gone and uh, and maybe he feels as though I haven't pushed on like I wanted to. Um, but having said that, we forget when we did play a back three, he looked really good. He he, he played really well on that outside. He, he got he was better than Kelly. Yes. So and I thought he was I thought he was perfectly fine um, on against uh, Borough. The occasional ball over the top might do him, but he gets back. He works hard. We haven't said, obviously, Woody's wanted to play him defensively, so we obviously don't get his quality on the cross and, and what have you. But but for a guy that's going through a difficult spell, he could be a key player for us. So let's not, let's not write him off. And if Woody is going with a double fullback, um, because that's what I think he was brought on to replace Arnie today and playing with the double full backs and, 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 and winning, trying to win the ball high up. He might be key. He might be key. But certainly, a st I think a steady seven for him. Yeah, I, um, think, that's, uh, I, think, that's, I think that's fair, Keith. And I think, to be fair, like you say, he gets his critics. But I'll tell you what's uh, also an interest side I always think is Woodgate's come in and... He obviously trusts him and obviously thinks he's a good character because regardless of Kelly, you know, being rushed back after international duty, if he didn't trust Rico in a massive game against Borough, he would have just said, sorry, Kelly, you're going to have to get through it. 
but he trusts Rico. He's you know, and he and like today, you know, when it's we need to hang on to to the result, he's bringing Rico, and you don't bring on a player if you don't trust him when you're trying to hold on yeah. to a lead. So he's obviously got the right characteristics there that that Woody likes, which which you know, when you get someone that's come in from the outside, you think oh, that's a good sign because Woodgate obviously feels he's a good you know, good player to bring on and trust and things like that. Hasn't been a great season for him, but and sometimes I almost feel like he's he's in two minds sometimes. Do I go? Do I stay? And that, like you said, sometimes he gets caught. But to his credit, he's had to play centre half of a three, left centre half of a three, left back and wing back on yeah. and off all season. And that must be hard to get that kind of relationships with players and things like that. So, yeah, yeah probably not going to start too many games if we don't have any injuries. But he's going to be key to the squad, like you say. So, um. I'm happy to go just for that Borough game. We won the game seven. Yeah, more than happy with that. And I, yeah, he gets a bit of criticism, but I do like him. I do, I do find Diego quite likable, and he, he's someone that I always think I just really want him to have a really good game. Um, yes, yes, you but, always want the best for him, and yeah, and, uh, yeah the, there's no malice there at all. And I, I, as I say, he's not, uh, he's not coasting. He's not picking up a paycheck. He is working hard. But he's yeah, had no, a good I agree season. with that. I agree with that, but I was expecting Lloyd to come in uh, for this game, and he did. And yeah, it was an interesting one with Lloyd because I always think he's quite he's quite sturdy defensively. He's clearly a, a talent. I mean, he doesn't. I know they didn't do well, but he doesn't. You don't just start for England twenty ones all the time if you're not a good player. Hmm. Sometimes I, I don't know what you think, Keith. Sometimes I think he's a little bit um, what's what's the word? A little bit too relaxed on the ball, and, and sometimes I think in possession, I think. He's, he's a little bit, sometimes his pass, I think, what's he thinking there? And I can see he's a quality player, but sometimes I think, you know, ball possession is not always there there for me. But what do you think? No, I think his decision-making needs to be improved mm. on. His, his mental focus sometimes, he, he's sort of like, you see him drifting out of a game a little bit, um, particularly when we were playing him as a win-back. Um Willie's coming and obviously solidified that. I thought today he was he was very very good. He 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 seemed to have the their, I mean their winger was in his pocket. Were no no issues at all where it has been on that left hand side. The issues there didn't seem like that today. He he looks. He's a, I think he's a confidence player as well. I think if things aren't going right for him, again, he can get a little bit frustrated. Rather like Rico, I'm being played here, there, everywhere. I just want to settle down. I just want to develop my game. But I think he's going to be a really good player going forward. And his athleticism and, and uh, his work rate is definitely there. Um, he's no Nathan Ake, but then there's very few people that are Nathan Ake's. But and, and I think that was an unfair comparison. But as a player in his own right, we've got a player there, and we need to just to develop him and, and and develop him in in the right way. A bit more leadership, a bit more the, taking responsibility and, and decision making, and then we'll have a cracking player then. Yeah, no, I totally agree. And like you mentioned there, when I thought he's playing for the England 21s, I thought, oh yeah, he is that young. You know, Lloyd Kelly is very mm. young. He's he's a really exciting talent. I know, like, I think Jürgen Klopp, they said, was looking at him for a little bit. You know, he's, mm. a, he's a talent. He's had his injury problems as well at a young age. And um, I think, like we said about Rico, he's been moved around positions, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But there's a player in there, definitely. Um, for Obviously, he only played today. So, like you said, it was a good performance. What are you saying? Eight. Yeah. I thought it was a steady eight. Um, I thought he he really wasn't was, wasn't finding any difficulty dealing with their as I say their wingers. Um, his athleticism. He he you know later on when he did go forward when Rico, uh, when Rico you know but they were interchanging and the interchanging with Den Juma start of a partnership with those guys so that that could be something that could be useful going forward then. totally agree keith um going to that middle part where it got rotated against borough it was jack wilshire um and i, I thought jack played well in the in the game i it was another one similar to rico that i kind of expected it to be rotated today one because of the type of game going away i do feel like it that might be something we see a bit more of at home where we're expected to have more of the ball i think we'll see jack and away from home, when we're expected to be a bit more under the cosh and a bit more of a scrap, we might see Ben Pearson. Mm. Um, also, the turnaround of games, we all know Jack Wilshere's injury, um, you know, kind of record. And I think that'd be good, actually, having Woodgate there, because Woodgate had his fair share of injuries as a player as well. So I think he'll be able to re relate to that. But 
Um, I thought Jack Wilshere was good against Borough. I think he's going to be key for the rest of the season. It's just moderating him and keeping his fitness, isn't it, really? Absolutely. And he's changing his game as well. He's no longer going to be that, that dynamic 10 attacking player. He's sort of moving in more almost... I wonder into that quarterback role that 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 um, you know the likes of Serge yes. developed as he got older and or or Darren Anderson if you you know another guy who was always injured but um, gave that steady the ship finds the space and he's like a metronome he just keeps it going all the time his quality are undoubted. Yeah, his fitness, uh, I think he obviously did fade in the Borough game, but uh, you're assured that when he's on, that the quality of the passing is going to be always crisp and nice, whereas it's not always with the other guys sometimes. Um, and he gives, leader, again, another leader on the pitch that just gives us uh, that his experience, which is, you know, is going to help people like Phil and... And, and Jeff and, and Ben Pearce and he'll have that experience so yeah I, I thought he was I thought he was very solid I think a seven yeah. on on the Borough game I thought yeah. that um, yeah really good yeah, really steady performance agree with that and one that obviously come in like we said Ben Pearson for today to be honest I thought he was probably man of the match for us today oh, I thought he God. was and he took a he took a kick on the ankle and he was still f going. You could see he was in pain and he was still going through the barrier. And he's just a bit of another player. He, Tyndall won't get the credit, but Tyndall brought him in for a reason. And you can see why because we were probably lacking a bit of that. Um, and he's just and he's got that championship experience as well, which probably Jason was looking at as well. As someone that you know he's he's been there in the championship and he knows what it's about and. You know, a bit like what we said about Lerma, he's got that battle and that grip. He's also a, a decent footballer as well, you know, yeah. let's not forget that. Um, but I, I thought it was evident that Preston would, like, literally mourn him when, when he left because he was unbelievable. But I, I really like this lad, I really do. Oh, I think he's, I think he's certainly um, old school, isn't he? Mm. Um, uh, but things just bounce off him all the time. Uh, but... Uh, yeah, what a what a, uh, a performance today! He was everywhere. He created obviously the second goal with that challenge. When you think, God Almighty, uh, he's everywhere on the pitch. Um, but he, he, it doesn't look at his fitness levels are so mm. high. Um, you know, he was running round at ninety three minutes and still running round, still closing down destructive he again he's a little bit of smithy in there he, he likes to have a little bit of banter with the opposition as well which is uh no bad thing he's uh he's a he's an old school player and um yeah i i i really like him i think he's gonna be one that we're gonna love um, yeah i, I was just about to say i think he's gonna turn into a fan's favorite you know when we get back yeah. there i, I think he, he's that type of character and he that the fans are really almost a little bit just thinking of us a little bit harry arter-esque when he first started you know really yeah. performing just someone that you're gonna love as a fan because you think god he wears his art on his sleeve he's gonna yeah. give us all but don't forget that there's quality there as well when he gets the ball i think so um i yeah, think yeah, I'd say, I'd, for me he was, he was, yeah he was up there for man of the match for me what do you reckon on today's performance it's a nine yeah, I agree with you, mate. I agree with you. Um, yeah, no, definitely. I love Ben Pearson. Been a really good acquisition. And off that kind of um, right side, if you like, obviously against Borough, we went with just trying to find his name, which was Junior Stanislas. Um, it, I think it was an illness. That that's, that was what was told. It looked like an injury in the game, but it was mm. told it was an illness. So um, I expected that change again today. But Junior against Borough, I do feel for him because I don't think he's as effective off the right. Um, but, you know, typical junior will go out there and do a job for us, as he always will. Yeah. And he's the type of player that we said about Arnie earlier. He can provide a bit of magic out of nowhere. Certainly when we were going through our, our bad spell, he was getting us out of trouble a lot. Um, and he's someone that I just think we need to keep him fit, get him fit, because he's going to be vital in he for the running. Absolutely. Um, again, he goes about his business quietly. I certainly agree. On the right, he's not as effective. Uh, I don't know if he was a winger at Burnley and he's just adapted his game and, and now having to be asked to play this different role. But what he does bring you is uh, there's tenacity. Um, whereas sometimes we've been soft 
a little bit soft, he will bring that tenacity. He'll bring that, you know, he's not afraid to to express how he wants uh, wants us to play. Um, um, but his form has recently dipped, Matt. It's a long season for him, but he's had periods in this season where he's been absolutely instrumental. The Stoke game comes to mind uh, and all that. But uh, maybe a little bit of rest, a couple of games rest, get him, get him right up, up to speed. I think he was a six for me uh, because he was a little bit uh, anonymous, but um, he's going to be key. Because you need those uh, those guys in the in the squad. Um, yeah, no, totally agree. And I think at the end of the season, if we are to achieve our our goals, we'll look back on it and we'll look at the numbers particularly, and we'll go, yeah, Junior was key again, wasn't he? So, um, yeah, 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 I agree with that. And I, I think it almost felt like it was pre-planned that he was going to play the Middlesbrough game, and then we were going to bring in Brooksy uh, for this one. Uh, nice seeing back, definitely nice seeing back. Mm. He's had his injury problems ever since he's come here, which is a real shame. Um, be interested to see what you, you think of the performance. I think it's, it's difficult because he has been out for a long period of time. So I don't want to be too harsh on the guy because at the end of the day, he's been out and he's just suddenly been thrown back in and started. And he's a neat and tidy and good footballer. I feel like sometimes we put too much pressure on him as a fan base. I remember when we were in the relegation scrap last season. And when he was coming back, we're going, oh, Brooks, he's going to be the saviour. And then yeah. like now it's like, oh, Brooks, he's back. We're going to be fine. I think... Let's calm down. He's a good footballer. He's a very, very good footballer. Has Have I ever felt he's a footballer that's going to be our saviour and put us out of the bag? No, personally. I think he comes, blows hot and cold in games. Yeah. Undoubted quality. But um, what did you think of his return? It is good to have him back, isn't it? Of course. And uh, that little flick on to create the goal today is that little bit of quality that we 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 need yeah. i i do agree with you though tom since restart he hasn't hit the heights that i would have expected to be and i also question sometimes his temperament um in some cases quite vocally but there's no doubt in there is a quality player and i want him to be the best he can be absolutely but i think he needs to He's obviously the injuries have, uh, have thrown him out, but I also think I question his desire, question it sometimes. Does it, he doesn't impose himself on, on games like I would like to? And where he has done well is actually in the in, in the middle of the park, mm. in the midfield, because he we seem to cut off fifty percent of his game. I've talked about this before, yeah. so. Maybe he's unhappy in the the role he's playing. Maybe he's unhappy just being at the club full stop. I don't know. But I would hope now with the lead up to the playoffs, he can start to show that quality again. And the reason why he was rated so highly. Yeah, no, I agree. And I, I've always, I always try and uh, see the best in in the players and stuff like that. Mm. And like, same as you, all season, kind of thought, don't look like a player that wants to be here. I've always worried about that. And the only other thing I could think of to try and, you know, give him credit, if you like, is sometimes I feel like there were times earlier in the season where I felt like he felt like I'm the main man here and I've got to make something happen all the time. And he would take one extra touch, make the wrong decision. And I almost felt like he was playing with a burden on his back. Like, mm. I've got to make something happen because I'm the main man here. I'm the the, the best player, etc. And maybe that's difficult for a player. And you know, it must be difficult for a player if you feel that. Mm. And that, that was just me trying to give him a little bit of, bit of leeway, if you like, thinking, does he maybe feel like it's it's all on him a little bit too much? And maybe now, coming back into the team, seeing how Arnie's doing, particularly, um, Dom Solanke in there now, and, you know, you've got Jack Wilshire amongst the squad. Hopefully he won't feel that as much, potentially, and will think, actually, they've done quite well without me. You know, I could just add to it rather than feel like I'm the one that's got to make something happen. Yeah. Um, I hope so anyway, and I'm, I'm chuffed he's back, don't get me wrong, because he's a yeah. very good footballer. But today's game, what do you think? It's a six, I'm afraid. Yeah. But um, yeah, I didn't expect him to come in and be incredible. He has been out for a period of time as well. Um, won't get into all the subs like your Surridge and Long and stuff like that, because it wouldn't be fair to rate him. But I purposely left out the main man. Uh, Philip, Philip how, do you, how do you have to save the, the best till last? I mean... I would be. I think every fan would be lying if we saw this coming. Um, he was one. We just said it about Brooks there. I was thinking he don't want to be here. Start the season. I think oh, he just wanders about, does my head in. But I tell you what, credit to Woodgate. He's he's putting mm. the wrong. 
I think it would have, I've said this on a previous show, it would have been easy for a manager to come in and put Wilshire in the 10. Would have been easy to do that. But he's looked at it and thought, actually, no, this, I think Billing can offer us more in that role. And um, not a natural 10, but he's just someone that I feel, like we were alluding to earlier, you don't want to put him down to a role. You kind of want to go, just go out there and do what you got to do and try and get closer to Dom. And he scored again. And it's just like, these goals, like every week, he's just, and I think we've got a stat that every time he scores, we win, which is nice as well. Mm. But what can we say? Brilliant. Both games again. I, I, I think I saw the signs of what a quality player was in the Norwich game where he was closing down the passing space. He's doing it again, the quiet work, closing down passing lanes, not necessarily tackling, but making their, their, their creative players in their middle part, forcing them to make options and doing that quiet work that, that a, a number eight can do. Uh, he's, He's he's a very unusual role, certainly certainly over here, and but his 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 touch is lovely. His his passing, he's he, again he's a very very intelligent player, and it's it's a shame, isn't it, that we didn't spot this earlier. Um, obviously, I, I'm sure Eddie must have seen it, but but I just think he looks a big lad, but in actual fact, he's a, a a nuanced player who, who some, sometimes you see him switch a pass. Sometimes he's deep. Sometimes he's in the pocket. He attacks the half spaces, and that is what's creating us. I think the chances, like that like Lerma's goal against Borough, the space was opened up, and and he creates more space as well. So he's again, he's like Solanke. We 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 we've misunderstood that guy. Um, I think you could build a team around him if you, if you allow him to play like that and have the two holding or the, the more defensive minded. Let him play. Uh, he's uh, he's wonderful when you see him in full fright and that big smile when he scores. Um, yeah, pretty nice to see, definitely. Because he, he always he always looked at the start of the season like a player that wasn't happy, and and that was that was yeah. hard to see because you want to, like we said, you want want players to play with a smile on their face. I wonder. I've just been kind of think about it in my head and I thought well why has no one seen this and I wonder if because of his size and his physical presence different managers have felt well surely he can do a job a bit deeper because he's got the physicality of it and it's meant that that's almost you know detrimental to him because he hasn't been given that license but um to think of all the midfield options we've got obviously uh, at the moment it's a shame that Lewis Cook's out but all them options we've got in the middle I thought Billy would be right down the pecking order now he's leading the way. It's yeah. it's amazing, but it's it feels like a new signing. And long may it continue. Um, are we getting out of the Big Ten for Phil Bill? I think you got to. Oh, I think you got to. He oh, pulls the strings. He he's such a he's such a cultured player, and I think he's. I don't think we've ever seen that in Bournemouth colours before. That sort of cultured. Mm. That, uh, and, and I'm sure Eddie thought, oh, I've got a holding player here. But I tell you who reminds me of it's Witzel for the Belgians. He, oh. He's yeah, he, that sort of like, he looks like a big lump that's going to just dominate the midfield. Yeah. But actually a really nice pass, a fine space. Uh, uh, obviously a different type of player. Yeah. Witzel's a, a far more defensive player. But again, a cultured player, uh, and people say, just an anecdote, Peter Crouch always had a great touch for a big lad. Yeah. And he's similar. He looks like a big lad, but actually, he's, he's, uh, I, I, think, I think actually for the last six, seven games, he has been yeah. pulling the strings and uh, you could build a, build a lovely squad around him. He's, he's but, almost opposite of how he, you feel he should be. I'd probably say his weakest attribute is heading. That's, that's incredible when you look at the size of him. But but yeah, that's, that's why I thought that I wonder if he's just been misunderstood a little bit in the sort of, because of his physique and he hasn't been been used in the right way. And, you know, whatever we think of, you know, Woodgate and what's happened this season, that's one of the things he deserves the biggest credit for. He has, Phil Billings being Woodgate's best player of the season, hasn't he? Um, Absolutely. No question. Absolutely. That. And he's, he's almost hung his hat on him and said, I believe in you. And I, you know, and he's, he's reaping the rewards. So, um, yeah, yeah, buzzing. Really do that. 
in fairness to Jason, I think he was doing that as well. He had really good performances at the beginning of the season. But, he, uh, you know, where it, people would say, oh, I didn't realise he was like yeah. this. But he was in and out. It was, too, it was too hot and cold, yeah. Yeah. And we were rotating an awful lot more than what we're doing now. Yeah. So, yeah, um, I, I, yeah him and Solanke are yeah. the, the, the two worst players ever. And now <laughs> our saviours, so. Yeah, oh, and it's, uh, it's brilliant. We're a fickle bunch, but yeah, it's mm. uh, it's looking a bit rosy. Before I let you go, Keith, we've got to have a little prediction, haven't we, for Coventry, which on paper looks a bit nicer, but we know that's done happen in the Championship. I mean, they got a good win as well today, didn't they? They turned the corner a little bit. They, yeah. they, they're not a bad time. I mean, we played really well against them when we played them. Very it feels very early in the season now. But um, it won't be easy, but are you confident? Yeah, I think I think they're more likely to score against us than yeah. than the, the, the previous, uh, you know, Borough and Blackburn. Um, however, I think I think if we keep the consistency again, this is a game for Pearson. I think to dominate that midfield for us, maybe take him off after seventeen, put Wilkshire in if we need to, just to get things a little bit of momentum, but. I see a 3-1 on that one. I know that's a popular scoreline, but I do see a 3-1. That's what and it was, I, wasn't it, in the reverse? Was it 3-1 in the reverse fixture? Yeah. Wasn't it? yeah. yeah. I, I, I actually agree with you. I think it will be a, a slightly different game to the two we've just had in the sense that I think Coventry will will have a go and they'll they'll try and play and they'll try and yeah. you know catch us and it will be a different type of game. So it'll be, we'll have to adapt to that. But with that, I think we'll have more chances to get in as well. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd probably agree with you. I think it's it's a game I'd, I'd you know, depending on fitness, I'd stick very similar. And then if you need to just open it up a bit more, you've got someone like Jack Wilshire to come on. Um, if you if you need to get hold of the ball a little bit more and open them up. But yeah, I'm I'm quietly confident. Um I might go with I might I might go two one. But um yeah, I, I think it might be a te- both teams to score and win kind of game. But yeah. four wins in a row would be would be rather nice, oh. wouldn't it? So it's not getting us now, but oh. yeah. Still twists and it's, that's the thing with the championship. It feels like there's barely any games to go, but there will still be twists and turns. Trust me, yeah. there will yeah, be. Made, yeah. but... Swansea are looking like um, Don't know what... that's looking like that's going off the boil. Brentford are not exactly putting up any trees. They're no. sort of doing their typical choking. Yeah. Um, um, I think there's a, a good gap between us, but yeah. um, and and the 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 the, uh, the other pack, but. Yeah. But it's us, Barnsley, Reading. And, yeah, that's, that's and it, like. I've got a horrible feeling yeah. it's going to go down to the last game of the season. I think that Stoke game it could be the, the, a big one. When, and I think the Norwich game. When you hear last game of the season, who do you, you don't want Stoke, do you? It's just no. a horrible game. But, you know, there, there's questions saying they'll be on the beach. You know, I always think when you play a team like Stoke, they're probably not going to be playing anything. Don't get me wrong, they'll, they'll still be a hard team. But... Will they maybe go or try a few youngsters? Do you know what I mean? Ready for players that are maybe trying to earn a contract for next season and, and things like that. But yeah, it'll be it'll be interesting. But the more we win, I'd suddenly change and I start going, you know what? Actually, Brentford always choke. I don't. I mean, Swansea, both times we played them and recently, they don't look up to it. Red in a fault a little bit. Barnsley are quite inexperienced in this position, quite a young yeah. team. We're gonna we're going up, aren't we? It just changes all the time. But um yeah. Oh, it's going to be at least going to be exciting, mate. It's going to be exciting yeah. right to the end. And uh, pleasure to have you on, Keith. Great. I could just chat. I mean, we're nearly at an hour now. We just get chatting football. It could go on forever, couldn't we? Did we say we'd be about 20 minutes? Yeah, we said we'd be oh, about no. 20 minutes. And then it was never going to happen with me and you, mate. But no, really no. It, Keith. No, it's been an absolute joy to come on here. And uh, hopefully people might agree with us. I hope so. Yeah, I reckon so, mate. Cheers, Keith. Appreciate it, mate. And yeah, thanks to everyone that's watching. Let us know if you agree. Um, Phil Billy deserved a 10, did he? The, o- the only thing you could disagree on there is if I had an 11, but I didn't have one. But yeah, hope you enjoy, guys. And uh, it's going all right, isn't it? Let's hope we can get four on the bounce now. Uh, really good. <sighs> just getting nervous now, isn't it? But let's hope we can just kick on from here. We're seeing some good signs. And uh, yeah, positivity back in the club and amongst the fan base. Smiles on faces. Really good to see. Enjoy the end of your Easter weekend and on to the next. Up cherries.